So welcome to Technodad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we're going to be going over my favorite KVM switch. And we'll tell you what a KVM switch is. Plus, we'll be going over some pros and cons. And we'll even throw in a money-saving tip there. And we'll do that right after the intro. And a special thanks to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. Thank you. So if you haven't been to our channel already, uh, my name is Jeff and this is Technodad Life. And what we cover here are servers and hardware and we review different things and do tutorials. And so today what we're going to be doing is covering this KVM switch. And so this is the GD Tech KVM switch, which I found was the most, which I found was the most bang for your buck switch. And so there are different types of switches. And so basically this is a HDMI switch. And so if you don't know already, uh, so a HDMI is the port that goes into your display. And so older servers, they use VGAs, newer ones, they have HDMI. If you have a VGA server, you can still use these. You just need an adapter and I'll leave a link in the description below for adapters for this. And so first what we'll do is we'll do a little unboxing of this and then we'll show you what's in the box and the features. Now one of the nice things about this one is it actually includes all the cables for most KVM switches. So most KVM switches, they don't have the cables in so those cables are at extra expense. So this is actually quite a good deal if you include that. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So it's a basic white and blue box and it says KVM switch on it and I'm holding it upside down. Oh, there we go. There we can see what it is. Made in China. We're going to open it up and the first thing that we see are cables. Lots and lots of cables. And why I like this one is it has all the cables that you need. So basically it has five USB cables and then uh, five HDMI cables and they're in these little plastic bags. That one was nice and easy to open. The second one though is going to take me a little longer. We're going to have to cut that because it took me a lot, long time to get that out. But basically just sort of basic HDMI and USB cables which we need and which since we don't have to buy that saves us a little money. So next we pull out the switch and it's nice heavy it's made out of aluminum or metal it looks like and yep nice silver finish so on the front here we have the different buttons so basically these buttons you push to select and then it also gives a light if it's on or if it is uh, selected and on the back here we have some hdmi ports uh, four of those right there, so USB and HDMI ports for your different computers. Here's the HDMI port for the uh, actual monitor and the switches and the power ports. Then we have some directions, which I will never look at. And then, let's see, we have two more things in here. So... Let's look in the big box. Oh, I for forgot the little diskette. So this is if you use Windows machines, you can use it to use your keyboard to switch. But I just pressed the button on the front of the uh, KVM. There's the power supply for the KVM. And then we have one more box. Let's see what's inside of it. And it's a mouse. So you actually even get a mouse with your KVM switch doesn't feel very heavy I would not say this is the most quality mouse in the world but hey you can uh, use it or give it to your kids I guess so now we're gonna start setting everything up first we gotta plug in our monitor HDMI power undo our power cable here for our KVM plug that into the wall and then we need to start undoing all these cables because we have lots of cables for everything and so oh, before we do that we're going to get out our keyboard and our mouse plug those in along with our hdmi from our monitor those go all in the black section of the kvm on the back so you don't confuse it 
And then start plugging in there. I brought up a nook. Get those cables out, start plugging them in. The square part goes on the USB on the KVM, then the rest goes in the nook. And through the magic of video editing, we're all set up now, and you can see Open Media Vault is booting in the background here. And so that's going to be on our, actually our second one. I only plugged in three things, so. Then uh, we'll go over, I have a Chromebook set up. And there you can see the Chromebook set up. So let's check the keyboard and the mouse here. And so mouse works. And there the keyboard works. So two out of three so far. So let's go over to our Windows machine. And up oh, there's our Windows machine. And let's just open that up. And I don't think this one is connected to the internet through uh, Wi-Fi or anything, so it's not connected. But let's just try typing. And so there, typing works. So the KVM switch saves a lot of time because you can use one monitor for four different computers, which is great for a servers or if you're running multiple test machines at once. So if you like this video, make sure you like, and if you haven't already subscribed, and make sure you check the show notes for any of the descriptions that we talked about, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.